Welcome to this video on the science of attraction, understanding the psychological factors that influence love and lust. Have you ever wondered why we get those butterflies in our stomachs when we see someone we're attracted to? The truth is, attraction is a complex phenomenon that involves a combination of hormones, neurotransmitters, social and cultural influences, and more. Let's start with hormones and neurotransmitters. Did you know that these chemical messengers in our bodies play a huge role in attraction? Dopamine, for example, is a neurotransmitter that's associated with feelings of pleasure and reward. So, when we're around someone we're attracted to, our brains release dopamine, giving us that high feeling. Speaking of attraction, it's important to note the difference between love and lust. Love is a deep and emotional connection, while lust is a strong physical attraction. Love and lust are influenced by different psychological factors. For example, the hormone oxytocin, also known as the cuddle hormone, is associated with feelings of bonding and attachment. So, when we're in love, our brains release oxytocin, which helps us feel close to the person we're attracted to. On the other hand, testosterone a hormone present in both men and women, is associated with sexual desire and attraction. So, when we're feeling lustful, our brains release more testosterone. Now, let's talk about social and cultural influences on attraction. Our culture and society play a big role in shaping our preferences and attraction to certain individuals. For example, did you know that in some cultures, it's considered attractive for a woman to be curvy, while in other cultures, a thin figure is considered more attractive. Similarly, certain personality traits may be considered more attractive in one culture than in another. Now let's dive into the concept of the love map. This term was first coined by renowned psychologist John Bowlby, who proposed that our preferences and attraction to certain individuals are shaped by past experiences and memories. For example, if you had a positive experience with a person who has a particular physical feature, such as blonde hair, you may be more attracted to people with blonde hair in the future. Similarly, if you had a bad experience with a particular personality type, you may be less attracted to people with that personality type. The matching hypothesis is another important concept to understand when it comes to attraction. This theory proposes that people are more likely to be attracted to and form relationships with individuals who are similar to them in terms of social and demographic characteristics, such as age, education level, and socioeconomic status. The idea is that we feel more comfortable and have more in common with people who are similar to us. Now we'll delve into the concept of self-fulfilling prophecy in attraction. This refers to the idea that our beliefs and expectations about a person can influence how we perceive and interact with them, which can ultimately affect the outcome of the relationship. For example, if you believe that someone is attractive, you may be more likely to act in ways that make them attracted to you as well. Attraction is a complex and multifaceted phenomenon that is influenced by a variety of psychological factors, including hormones, neurotransmitters, past experiences, social and cultural influences, and more. By understanding these factors, 